Today, NVIDIA is launching another 4000 series card, and this RTX 4070 Ti is meant to be a little bit more affordable than the 4090 and the 4080, while being faster and more efficient than anything from the last generation. But while the 4090 and the 4080 were pretty much launched into a vacuum with no real competition out just yet, this card is coming out after AMD launched their latest Radeon cards, which definitely puts a bit more pressure on this 4070 Ti to perform well. So I have tested 27 different games on three different resolutions, and yeah, let's see how this RTX 4070 Ti holds up. Let's go! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12-volt high-power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from NVIDIA. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there, and as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. There are no Founders editions of this 4070 Ti chip, so Nvidia sent out various third-party models to reviewers instead, and I've got this gaming OC from Gigabyte. Now, the gaming OC itself should be a pretty familiar sight at this point. It is a big three-fan card with a neutral gray color scheme that should match most of the hardware out there. The shroud itself is plastic, but the backplate is made of metal, and it does stand out with that RGB effect behind the fans, but it has very little RGB on the side and on the back, so you will only see the LEDs if you mount this card vertically. I have the Aero card here as well that goes great with white builds and that matches their Aero motherboards as well, but other than having a slightly different color, the Aero is very similar to the gaming OC. They are similar in size, they have a similar heatsink design, both have a dual BIOS feature and both offer three display ports and one HDMI port on the back. Now, I will talk about the thermal performance a bit later, but right now, between these two cards, it pretty much comes down to which color you like more. Now, both cards also use the new 12-volt high-power connector that we've seen on the 4080 and 4090 cards, and you do get a splitter, but this time around, the splitter only requires two traditional 8-pin connectors, so it's not as bulky as before. Nevertheless, I would still recommend grabbing a native cable instead. Now, I was using the Seasonic cable for all my testing because I use Seasonic power supplies for my test benches, and that cable is much easier to work with and it just looks better, in my opinion. If we look at the specs, the 4070 Ti has more CUDA cores, more tensor cores and ray tracing cores, and also more memory than the old RTX 3070 Ti, on top of having the newer architecture and process. So it should be a big step up from its predecessor, but keep in mind, that was a card that launched at $600. Now, I don't know what the exact prices are going to be just yet, but the latest rumor suggests an $800 MSRP. But keep in mind, there is no Founders Edition of this card and the third-party models tend to cost a bit more. So if I compare it to the 4080, it has about 20% less CUDA cores, tensor cores and ray tracing cores. Boost clocks should be slightly higher, but it also has 12 gigabytes of memory compared to 16 and a smaller memory bus to match it. The TDP is lower as well, but I'll talk about the power consumption a bit later. So for my comparison, I will be putting it up against the most likely competition. So the RX 7900 XT, the 7900 XTX, the RTX 4080, 4090, as well as the older 3080 for reference. And if you want to know all the details about my test benches and what exactly am I using for testing, do check the description of this video. Now, Nvidia is marketing this as a 1440p 120 plus FPS card. So let's see if that is true. Starting with Spider-Man Remastered at 4K resolution, the 4070 Ti is trailing behind the 4080 by a decent margin, but it is competing with the 7900 XT pretty well, having slightly lower FPS average, but slightly better 1% lows, which you can see in the brackets. 
At 1440p and 1080p, that balance doesn't really change much, but more importantly, it shows that it can handle this game at any of these three resolutions. In God of War, the balance shifts a little bit more in favor of AMD, where the 7900 XT does a bit better than the 4070 Ti in high resolutions, although at low resolutions, that gap gets bigger. While the RTX 4080 was a convincing generational upgrade across all resolutions, the gap between the 3080 and the 4070 Ti is kinda disappointing here, especially at high resolutions. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the RTX 4070 Ti is a decent upgrade over the RTX 3080, especially at 1080p and 1440p, but the 7900 XT is consistently faster across the board. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows a similar pattern. It is behind the 7900 XT by a bit of a margin, but this time around it is beating the 3080 by a much better margin. Dying Light 2 is a notoriously hard game to run, and here the 4070 Ti drops under 60 FPS at 4K, where the 4080 and the 4090 were holding up much better. It does hold up well at 1440p, just hitting that 120 FPS average, but you'll probably still want to enable DLSS at any resolution above 1080p. Cyberpunk 2077 is also hard on the GPU, and without DLSS, the 4070 Ti struggled to hit 60 FPS even at high settings without any ray tracing enabled. And while DLSS will improve the frame rate, I do think the gap between the 4070 Ti and 4080 is worth pointing out. One is just really smooth, and the other just isn't. Doom Eternal is a super easy game to run, with all cards showing higher FPS than current monitors can display. The 4070 Ti is a bit behind the XT here, but I would say it's quite far behind the 4080 and the XTX that I kind of expected this card to compete with. Formula 1 2022 on ultra high settings does include some light ray tracing effects, and as a result, the 4070 Ti looks relatively better here. It is ahead of the XT, with a significant gap in 1% lows on 4K resolution especially. Microsoft Flight Simulator is very CPU heavy, so at 1080p, all these new cards perform very similarly. But at 1440p, the 4070 Ti is the first to get more GPU limited, and at 4K resolution, both the 4070 Ti and the 7900 XT were not able to hit 60 FPS once again. So you will definitely want to enable the LSS for high resolutions here. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has so many updates all the time, so I didn't have time to retest every single card just yet, but between these four, the 4070 Ti is actually competing closely with the 7900 XT at 4K resolution and 1440p. But the AMD card easily wins at lower resolutions. Owners of 360Hz 1080p monitors won't be impressed, but about 200 FPS on 1440p is more than enough for anyone semi-casual, semi-competitive. The CSGO results have been pretty strong strange lately, uh, with the XT beating the XTX and even the 4090 at high resolutions, and the 3080 beating the 4080, for example. And the 4070 Ti wasn't spared here, landing behind the 3080 as well. Now, I don't know if this is an optimization issue for the newest generation of graphics cards or there's something else going on, but there is definitely something going on in this game that needs to be fixed. To keep it a bit shorter, I'm not going to talk about every single individual game, so let's look at some summaries instead. If we compare it to the RTX 3080, the RTX 4070 Ti is about 18 to 19% faster on average across all three resolutions. A 3080 is somewhere between 10 to 20% ahead of the 3070 Ti, so for a generational upgrade, this looks pretty all right. Looking at individual games at both 1440p and 4K, Aside from CSGO, which is definitely the odd one out, it is close in a couple of games, but in the vast majority of games, the 4070 Ti is at least 15% faster. But when I compare it to the RTX 4080, the 4080 is 10% faster on 1080p, which isn't that relevant, about 18% faster on 1440p, and about 24% faster on 4K, which is a really relevant upgrade. 
and it does that consistently as well. So 21 out of 25 titles show a performance gain of at least 10% at 1440p, with plenty showing 20% or more. And at 4K resolution, there is only a single game where the 4080 is in a head by at least 15%, and that one is an unoptimized mess at the moment. Compared to the 7900 XT, the XT is about 5% faster on 1080p, 11% faster on 1440p, and 15% faster at 4K resolution. At 1440p, most games do show a gap of 10% or less, but I don't think it looks good for Nvidia that AMD takes the win in 22 out of 25 games, with 9 of them showing a gap of more than 10%. And at 4K resolution, the 4070 Ti does better in a single game that has some ray tracing included in it, while AMD now wins 10 games by 15% or more. When we put it next to the 7900 XTX, it gets even more interesting. At 1080p, the gap is only 8%, but it goes up to 19% at 1440p and 31% at 4K resolution. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti holds on to a small margin in two games, while the XTX is much faster in most of them. And at 4K resolution especially, the XTX just feels like a different class of a product. Only in Formula 1 2022 it gets close, everything else shows a gap of at least 10% or more, and 18 out of 25 games show a gap of 25% or more. Now, Nvidia still has a couple of tricks up their sleeve. Uh, it uses significantly less power than the 4080 and the new Radeon cards, and it will very much so depend on your region and how much you pay for your electricity. But for some European countries, uh, especially if you game a lot, this can save you hundreds of euros over the years, and that can really shift the balance in Nvidia's favor. Now, low power also means that you can generally expect these cards to run cool and quiet. Now, big cards like these two from Gigabyte really shouldn't have problems with 260-ish watts, so I don't understand why the default OC BIOS runs the fans super loud, both on the gaming OC and on the Aero. There is no reason for the fans to run at 1700 to 1800 RPM and push the temps into the low 50s, especially when the silent BIOS shows mid to high 50s with very little noise at all. So I really think that Gigabyte should reconsider the fan profile, and until they do, you can just run the card in the second BIOS instead. It shows low temps across the board while making very little noise, and in terms of clock speeds and gaming performance, there is virtually no difference between the two profiles. Now, between these two cards, the Aero does come out slightly ahead, but both coolers are basically an overkill for this chip. Also, neither showed any sort of coil wind during any of my testing. Now, another NVIDIA upside is DLSS 3, which includes AI frame generation. So the GPU basically uses AI to generate an extra frame in between two frames. And beside the fact that you get more FPS, this really helps situations where the frame rate is limited by your CPU. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, on 1440p, upscaling by itself doesn't do that much due to the CPU bottleneck, but uh, DLSS 3 with frame generation actually increases the frame rate by a lot. Uh, now, there is a latency penalty in this particular situation, but for a high refresh rate, 1440p screen in a slow game like this one, I would say it's worth it. Formula 1 2022 on 1440p is another very good example where frame generation gets you a lot higher average and 1% low FPS, and here the latency penalty is actually minimal, pretty much matching the native rendering. But this is also situation specific, so in Spider-Man, for example, on 1440p, we are not fully CPU bound, so enabling DLSS 3 increases the latency by a bit, while giving an almost insignificant FPS increase. And in Flight Simulator at 4K, with this card, uh, there were some mixed results as well. So the average FPS was up, but the 1% lows weren't that different, and there was a lot more latency. So in this situation, I would recommend using DLSS only for upscaling and not for frame generation. So I would say it really depends 
on the situation, but if you're someone who uh, plays those games that have DLSS 3 in them, it is a really good feature, and they have added DLSS 3 support to a ton of games already. And of course, we cannot talk about NVIDIA without mentioning ray tracing. And when we look at some benchmarks with ray tracing in it, the 4070 Ti also looks better compared to the last generation of cards. RTX with DLSS will get you decent frame rates at 1440p, but for 4K gaming, going for at least 4080 for some of the heavier titles is definitely recommended. Now, before we round up, uh, I do want to end uh, with a complete summary of all games on all three resolutions. So on 1080p, where many games are CPU bound, we do see that you can generally get that 144 FPS plus experience. Red Dead Redemption would get more than that with DLSS enabled, and using DLSS 3, we can get Flight Simulator close to 200 FPS as well. At 1440p, where Nvidia promised that 120 FPS plus experience, their claim seems to hold up. And the games that are under 120 FPS all have an upscaling option, which would easily put them over that 120 limit. So I would say this is a great 1440p card. But when it comes to 4K resolution, I do think that if you're really serious about 4K gaming, the RX 7900 XTX or the RTX 4080 or above is the way to go. But for all the games that support upscaling, the 4070 Ti can offer a very decent 4K experience. But at the end of the day, it will all come down to price and availability. Now, I was a bit worried because Nvidia didn't share any information about the prices before the actual launch. But on the other hand, even if they did give us an exact number, we all know that the reality can be much, much, much different in the actual shops. Now, looking at the pure performance, I think the 4070 Ti needs to end up at least 20% or ideally about 25% cheaper than the 4080 for it to make any sense if you're looking for a 1440p card. Now, that should be the bare minimum. And if it does end up in a situation where a 4080 is 50% more expensive, the 4070 Ti will end up looking great. Now, compared to AMD cards, the choice is a bit more complicated. The XT and the XTX especially both offer a lot more raw performance in general, while the 4070 Ti should in theory be cheaper. But the XCX just doesn't exist at all, or at least not at that $1,000 mark. And AMD does have a lot of raw potential, but there were some other issues with AMD that cannot be overlooked. Now, I did talk about that in one of my previous videos, so if you want to check it out, I will leave the link in the description down below. So if 4070 Ti and the XT end up costing the same, you will have to choose for yourself if you want about 10 to 15% more raw performance that AMD has to offer, or you want some of the features and benefits of Nvidia cards like lower power consumption, a better ray tracing performance, and a bit more stability overall. But if the 4070 Ti ends up being significantly cheaper, it would be a much better option and it would put the pressure back on AMD to lower their prices. Anyway, this is all I have for this video. I do have a few more cards and a few more videos going live today, so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one. Bye!